look, All right. with the brr, brr, and a lot of people asked a lot of questions, reporters, we were asking questions, the gentlemen here were asking questions, what's happening with the Kazichi speed? Nobody's saying nothing. And then they said something yesterday. Kevin Hart was confirmed as the Kazichi's coach for the next three seasons. I've got Tabiso and I've got Hunter here. And hopefully Huitzil is going to join us later, uh, a vet supporter who is going to give us an insight on what Kaiser Chiefs need to expect from Kevin Hunt. Look, guys, there's no time in wasting. Arzenen immediately. What is expected of Kevin Hunt from Kaiser Chiefs? Quickly. Winning mentality. That's what is expected. Change the, the, the that mentality uh, into a winning mentality because that, that is what has been missing uh, especially during, during the bio bubble as well. I mean, the guys were just down, the, the guys' uh, body language uh, was just totally off. So with the inclusion of Gavin Hunt for the next three seasons, uh, we're going to expect hard work, we're going to expect 110% uh, commitment, but most importantly, winning mentality. And if we have that new winning mentality and uh, the, the will to win, I can tell you, we will be uh, going back to our glory days. Tabiso. Yep, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree with Hunter a hundred percent. A winning mentality, and I think uh, an inclusion of young players too, because we have seen some dead horses on the field. So I think it's time for those horses to to leave the field and relax now, and watch the youngsters play. So a winning mentality is all we want. And to be honest, we know he just got there, and he he needs to build his own team. He needs to build his own formation. So we will give him time for that, so he can, you know, establish his philosophy. But a winning mentality is all we, we want, you know. Okay. That's all so, we want. Glory days, we no longer want to be jokes. Okay, look. You said it. I'll, I'll, I'll go with it. I'll go with it. Let's say this, guys. Um, Coach Pito has been with Sanders for seven plus years. So you can say the man has been there. So it's, he has his challenges but he's been with the team for that long. Whereas, if we look at Gavin Nunn, he's coming in fresh, but he's coming into a big institution where a lot is expected. Yeah. So then the question then to positive supporters is, what happens with, let's say for argument's sake, right? Gavin Hunt comes in the season, performs really well. Um, we're talking either number one, number two, or number three mm. in there. Mm. But in terms of the gap between the clubs that are competing for the league, Kaza Chiefs is in it. Do you think then Kaza Chiefs will accept Kevin Hunt not winning the league this season and just say, no, it's his first season, so it's okay? It, it depends on the mandate. Yeah, it really de depends on the mandate. Um, in what uh, Mr. McDonald has actually given to Kevin Hunt. Uh, I see that there's an article that, uh, that was actually suggesting that uh, Mr. McDonald has actually given uh, Kevin uh, Hunt a mandate uh, that is just uh, based solely on Kev, uh, just to get the guys to take Kev seriously. But to, to actually answer your question uh, based on, on the league, look, if, as, in as much as uh, he has uh, he, he, he has been given three seasons, all right. What uh, the management will be looking at mostly is how the team performs under his leadership. All right. He can go on and uh, end up uh, second on the league, as uh, and uh, we are going to be uh, title contenders, for instance. And uh, if we end up not uh, we're winning the league, in my view, it's fine because. It was, it was his first season. He actually had uh, a whole 30 games to actually identify where he needs improvement. And um, in as much as uh, Kaza Chiefs is not like super sport, whereas uh, Gavin Hunt's first season at super sport, he was able to win the league. But uh, where, when you're coming to a bigger institution like Kaza Chiefs, yes, there's a lot of resources. Gavin Hunt himself is resourceful, but he himself has to identify what uh, areas uh, we, we need to um, uh, you know improve on in order to actually really fancy our chances of, of really winning the league, not just uh, competing for second place and third place, but to really, really win the league. So uh, if he doesn't win the, the league in his first season, no problem on, on my side, for as long as he, he actually installed a winning mentality on the players. That is what's most important. Have you so? <laughs> 
Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm with, uh, I'm with Hunter there. So I think for him, for, for the first season, because we're still waiting for, for, for Kes to respond, um, I think all he has to do is to compete for MTN8, NetBank, this, this, this one. The league is for him to build. The team, for now, he needs to build his team. He, uh, he needs to identify where issues are. He needs to identify where he needs to improve or what his plan is. Because he has three years, you know. I think Chiefs, this time, we as the fans, we need to give him time to build, to say, okay, the first year, you build what you want. Second year, you start to polish what you want. Third year, you go for everything that you want, you know. And then from there, he keeps on improving. And because to say we want him to win everything this first season, we'll be lying to ourselves. We have yeah. gotten uh, cows to come and graze in our uh, Etna Churena. Those cows are gone now. So it's time for us to also give Gavin Hunt a chance. We know he has winning capabilities and we trust him. So we're not going to go crazy. I know there's going to be a few hooligans who will shout, no, he needs to leave because he's not winning. No, we're going to be patient with him. Yeah, because, you know, I, I, asked, I asked the question because I think when we look, let's look at it holistically. You know, I mean, we three of us or four of us are having this conversation. But the question is, what about the millions of other supporters? Are they going to be more patient with Gavin Hunt having to build this team? Because I, I, I bring in the Sunland project in this because essentially, let's based on the stats that we've seen, we can say Gavin Hunt and Kazuchi will be competing to dethrone Sundowns um, to what they have at the moment. And mm. you talk about a guy who's been at the helm for more than seven years and he just started off. So do you think supporters yeah. will have that understanding of saying, okay, this guy has only been here one year. Let's let him build. Let's judge him by his third season to see if he actually took us from point A to point B. Or are they going to get on his back and saying, listen, we want results now. Because essentially, look, we, we can speculate about the main thing. Um, never know the main thing. It's in the contract. But yeah. the question yeah. like this, the one I'm asking, I, I hear is, you. what would like, I hear you. from the supporters? So, like, it will always happen in every institution, it's life, politics, and all that. There will be people who want to see something. That's why I say the best thing for Han to do now while building his team is to target this small one. Uh, target MTNA, target uh, uh, NetBank, you know, target Telecom. Uh, target those that you know, okay, I can win this one while you're preparing to build your own, uh, while you, you can tag, uh, sorry, what this? You know, target the league last, but just make sure every season you target at least one trophy or two. You know, yeah. he needs to target, okay, let me start by getting maybe MTN8. Okay, let me get NetBank. And then while building, people, even though they want to complain, he will have something to pacify them with. But if he doesn't win anything, yes, the fans will start crying. Well, yeah, it, I actually agree with Tabiso here. Yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah, I agree with Tabiso here. Yeah. Uh, he needs to uh, f put his focus on, on the cup games because uh, we are desperate to actually get this monkey off our back. So in order for us to do that, let, let us uh, focus on uh, winning the these cups like the MTN8, the Telcom Knockout uh, and the NetBank Cup. As far as the league is concerned, if he really wants to win the league in his first season, then he has to prioritize each and every single game. Uh, it doesn't matter how big or small uh, the, the games are, for as long as uh, he's targeting every single game and uh, he's prioritizing every single game so that he can be able to fancy his chances of winning the league. But um, I suggest to him, he, he should just uh, focus on the, he, he should just focus on the, what you call it? The Sorry about that. He must just focus on yeah, he must just uh, focus uh, on the small uh, cups uh, as well and then uh, leave the, the league for later. But yeah, of course, look, like I said, people are, are, are going to talk, all right? That, that's the only thing. People are really going to talk and, you know, they, they, they will say whatever. But uh, <laughs> if uh, Gavin Hunt does not even win anything, well, like uh, in this first season, hey, I think the people are really, really gonna get on his back. I mean, no, look at uh, what happened when he, he was at Swallows as well. He managed to win 
a, a, a EPSA Cup were with a uh, were, were with uh, Morocco Swallows, but then on the following year, geez, was uh, Swallows uh, supporters wanted to chase them out. So yeah, because you see, uh, you know, touch, it's a touch, touch, Touching on that hunter, because you know we understand that he was at Morocco Swallows and what happened there. Uh, he was at SuperSport and Vets, and look, the, the truth is here: Vets and SuperSport are not Kaiser Chiefs, Pirates, or or Sunnals. You know, once you get in that yeah. position, um, you know it's 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 yeah. one of those things that if you go without winning, like let me use Vets as as, a, as an example. You know, he goes maybe two seasons or so without winning. It goes under the radar. Whereas mm-hmm. at Kaza Chiefs or, or let, let me not even mention other teams. Let me rather stick to Kaza Chiefs. If at Kaza Chiefs you go on two seasons yeah. without winning, there's going to be a lot of pressure. And I guess that's going to be his first time that we actually see Gavin, Gavin Hunt at one of the Giants and to see how he's going to cope with the pressure that he's going to okay. get from the supporters. Um, and, and from what we see, we yeah. can assume that he's got the backing of the chairman and the, the, the board. But now yeah. we know about the look. So this is the moment, brother. The cast appeal. What is going on there? What players are we expecting to come in at Kaiser Chiefs? Let Arfene. No more, no more diving and subtweeting. We uh, okay. want to know who are the players that are going to Kaiser Chiefs. What is happening with the appeal? Uh, okay, let, let me check my email first and first. So What's her name? Uh, the lady actually responded. Uh, so I'm waiting. Uh, okay, Katie. Uh, it's it's Katie. What what's her say name? Uh, let me see. So the lady says uh, Katie Hawk. Uh, she's she, she's she's from Kes. So she says the case is still going on. So we're waiting in regards to that. So I think there's an case uh, that did an emergency appeal. So I'm just waiting to to pull another string because I know someone else that side. That I've actually worked with uh, when I was uh, in the UK. So the person is supposed to go and pull some few strings, and hopefully we'll know what's happening with Kaiser Chiefs. But yeah. hey, with Kes, if Kes passes, I know we're gonna get Nange. Uh, I know we're gonna get Monare, uh, and I know we're gonna get Santi. And the Rook, I know, is wanted also at Kaiser Chiefs. So yeah. Kes is the only thing that's standing in our way to build the Kaiser Chiefs that we really want. Wait, wait. But, but we, yeah, we, from we what's happening... Uh, but we, we heard reports that Lant is going to Paris. Yes. Are you saying, Uri, that's, that's not the case? No, it's not the case, man. No. Nah, it's not the case. Yeah. Kaiser Chiefs wants that case. guy. The same with Paris. You know, Paris likes to jump on our spotlight. So that's what's happening. Paris yeah. likes to jump on our spotlight just to get some PR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I agree with Tabiso uh, with what he's saying because well, once we've got the news that uh, TTM have released Sviso uh, Lanti as well as Tabo uh, Monaria, I can tell you right now it is a no brainer as to where they are going. And it's just a, a matter of uh, that the cast of Bill uh, j- just uh, mm-hmm. going in our favor. But uh, it, it's actually. Um, an obvious uh, case as to where they're going. They want to uh, play uh, under a coach in which they fully understand they have a really great relationship with. So uh, they, they don't see themselves uh, working uh, under the mentorship of, of uh, anybody else but Gavin Hunt. So it's just a, a matter of time yeah. before we actually see them in the colors of Kaza Chiefs. Okay, apart, apart from... And, and what, what best... Can I finish up first? Uh, quickly. Think about this. Munari loves Kaiser Chiefs. They, he always wanted to play for Kaiser Chiefs. So it's a win-win for him because he comes with a coach he knows really well and he comes to play for a club that he always wanted to play for. So you see, that that's something that's going to come in handy for us. So Kes, they just need to respond to us by next week, to be honest. Okay. Okay. Apart from Vading Vets, NEM or TTM? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who else is Kazichis looking at to bring in? I know you said uh, Derek from Marisbeck. Who else? Yeah. Uh, hmm. You know what? I think they're looking to offload Kambole, uh, by, by the way I see it, because Evan Guy is without a club at the moment, and uh, Gavin Hunt really loves to utilize uh, Evan Guy a lot. So. If we're going to see Evan Gar in Kazi Chiefs colors, then that means it's goodbye to uh, Lazarus Kamboli because 
Semen Ekovic, he is the, the, the main guy uh, for our squad, so there's a Kama Billiards as well. But if we want to actually have uh, some sort of depth in our squad where we have like four uh, strikers, then maybe the addition of Evan Gore could, could prove uh, beneficial and maybe it could uh, give uh, Kambole a lot of uh, competition as well. But uh, we really need to sort out our, our defence as well. Our, de- mm-hmm. our defence yeah. is really aging. And uh, we, we need uh, quality central defenders as well. I think uh, Cardoso is fast uh, reaching that at the end of his career as well. Uh, I don't think he's going to go any further. But he, even uh, Mato as well, uh, he, in, even though that he's 30, but uh, he, he's just uh, been a, a, a sluggish uh, this season. So he's been a, a sluggish uh, okay. this season. So he, Look, looking at the tape. Yeah, well, in regards to that, like in regards to Kambole. Mm-hmm. In, in regards to Kambole, I, I think it will be a, a big mistake to offload him quickly because I think for me, Castro will be the best option to offload right now. Uh, dude has loads of injuries. Kambole was poorly utilized last season because of uh, the position which he was playing. So I think he still has a lot to offer us. So I think Castro will be best to offload and bring in Evanga. For, for, for me, that, from my uh, personal opinion, I think Gambola still has something to offer us. And I think, yeah, he will be, it, it will be better if we take off Castro because of injuries. I don't think he, this season we're going to utilize him that much because he's still going to cry foul in regards to his injuries. Yeah, because yeah, I'm gonna touch. I'm gonna touch base on on Kambole for a bit. So if we if we if we look at let's say currently wingers at Kaiser Chiefs, you 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 talking about Zuma, you talking about Kama Billiard, um, you talking about who else? Doesn't seem like you, Kambole could be used as a winger. Maybe. But that's not his. That, that, but that's not his natural position, though. The guy's yeah, a centre yeah, forward. Yeah, not, but how he's more think, deadly. Think time and time again, players can be changed position, especially if we're looking at, let's say, he's a mobile player. He's quick. Yeah. He's able to take on players. Um, is is it really such a bad thing to maybe think and saying that he could uh, be that other option on the wings? Because if we're looking at currently, or let's say from the previous yeah. season, how many players were assigned that position? I mean, Parker for, was was playing as a winger at times. Surely you guys is, yeah. would not expect Parker to continue playing as a winger. No. Uh, surely you, you, you realize Parker needs to retire right now. So uh, in regards to Kambole, I don't think putting him as a winger would work. Because you could see like sometimes how he was utilized. He was, uh, he, was an, uh, he was a forward, but sometimes he was used more on wings. And that's why he struggled. So as a central forward, that's where he's he's more strong and powerful. So I think we need to stick with that. We we don't need to experiment. This is not Peter's camp. We're not gonna experiment and take someone and make him a right back today. He's a he's a forward tomorrow. He's this. You know, we just need to put Kambula where he's strong and utilize him where he is because he needs to build confidence first thing first. There's too much pressure from Kaiser Chief fans. So if we keep on confusing him. The fans are going to be on top of him and he's going to lose all his confidence again. Okay. You know what? Yeah. I agree with Tabito here because um, well, the, the strength well with Kambole is that he's really good on the ground. He's just not good in the air. So if you can be able to pair him yeah. up front with the likes of Nukovic, who's really good in the air, I can tell you that, that that can be a perfect match. So, And uh, the guy has got speed. Yeah, good. The, the guy's got speed, and he, he has the determination and the capabilities of really troubling the opposition defense as well. So, if you can play according, if he can play according to his strength, and that that, that is what Gavin Hunter is really going to encourage the players to do: play according to your strengths. Mm-hmm. We're going to see a different Kaiser Chiefs side because previously we had a coach who was really. Uh, busy chopping and changing uh, positions, chopping and changing, uh, you know, uh, starting lineups in which we just didn't even understand and it didn't even work out, out uh, in the end. And uh, I, I'm going to say this, we, we could have wrapped up the league a long time ago uh, if it were, wasn't for those uh, unnecessary uh, changes uh, that have been made. So with Gavin Hunt coming in, he, he is going to identify properly that, okay, this guy, his strength is uh, such and such. And uh, that is uh, where he's going to be playing. And come uh, game time, while the, the moment uh, he actually uh, proves his theory, which uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be correct, 
then uh, that is where, where the players are, are going to play. So Kambole, he really needs to play uh, according to his strength, which uh, is definitely um, say center forward because that is how we got to know him as uh, uh, when he was uh, playing for Zesco. So, um, and that, that's where he's more deadly. Even uh, for, for the national team, the Zambian national team, Chipolo Polo, he was playing say, central forward. So, uh, that, that, that should be his, his uh, permanent position. Okay. So, um, now, look, we, we, we've heard about upcomings. We know that Kevin is there. Who's going to be sitting next to Kevin Hunt? We spoke about Benny. Benny refuted and saying, you can't have Pep Guardiola and Jose Mourinho coaching in the same team. Do you think that Kevin is still going to see Benny? Or there's reports about Dylan Shepard coming. Who is going to be sitting next to Kevin Hunt? Personally, uh, you know, it's, I think, uh, and uh, this is going to de- depend entirely on uh, who Kevin Hunt re- really prefers. But uh, by the way, it seems that there's going to be two assistant coaches. One that uh, knows uh, Kevin Hunt mm-hmm. very well. It's either Kwane Lekopo or uh, Dylan Shepard. And then the other one that knows Kaiser Chiefs uh, as far as the culture is concerned. And uh, that, that is uh, in, in uh, the likes of Dr. Kumalo. So what I would uh, re- really suggest is that Kaiser Chiefs now should have two assistant coaches. Because the last time Kaiser Chiefs had two assistant coaches was when it was a... Uh, Dr. Kumalo and uh, Ace Kusik uh, back in the uh, 24 games. So it's time to, to get back uh, to having the two assistant coaches, one who knows the coach, one who knows the coach. And uh, that is how they're going to uh, have you thought? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still going to go with uh, Dr. Kumalo. And I believe, I don't think. He might want to bring Dylan Shepard, but I think he's still going to prefer Kobo. Though he prefers, uh, yeah, let me go with, going to be Dr. Kumalo and Kobo. I don't think he might bring uh, Dylan Shepard. There might be some few of the things, uh, uh, quarrels and, and sort of uh, blah, blah, blah. English, yes, have a half. So in regards to Dr. Kumalo, the reason I believe they will bring him in, um, if you have spent time with Dr. Kumalo, you will realize the leadership and the father uh, and the fathership that guy has. When he's with the lead, you can see everyone respect him, they listen to him and things like that. You know, uh, having spent time with him, like he was with Bolaki uh, Lukwati, and so forth, you can see they were looking at him for leadership. He knows when to motivate players and things like that. You know, yeah. Gavin Hunt can come up with the tactics, but sometimes what you need is a father, What sometimes what you need is a brother, and sometimes what you need is an elder that can say, man, just pick up your spirit, you can still do this. And Dr. Kumalo has that. He might not have the tactics, but he has that thing of say of giving you encouragement to say you can still do it and you believe you, uh, you believe it that you can do it. And cool. Kopo also has quite good experience that he can bring in as an assistant coach. So I will go with Dr. Kumalo and Kopo. Shepard, as much as Hunt likes him because he was there development for vet, he might not come. Okay. You know, just to add my two cents uh, with regards to Kwanele Kopo, I'm, I'm talking from personal experience. In my days of uh, me studying at TUT back in 2009, he was uh, busy uh, coaching the development while Gavin Hunt was mm-hmm. uh, coaching the first team of uh, Super Sports United. And the way he would uh, motivate those youngsters is totally phenomenal. Totally uh, unbelievable as well. And uh, that, that is just why, what I like about uh, Cornelio Coppo is that, firstly, he doesn't take nonsense. He, if he sees that you're flopping, he will tell it straight to your face that we're now a flop and you need to pull up your socks. So that, that is uh, the, the kind of expertise in which he's going to uh, bring uh, into the, the, the technical team, should he be uh, appointed. Because, look, uh, he has been working with Gavin for a long time. I mean, starting with development and he was uh, busy promoting youngsters from the development of Supersport to the first team and to, to the point where uh, towards uh, Gavin's, uh, uh, you know, last uh, reign as a super sports uh, coach, uh, he was actually the assistant coach together with uh, Thomas Malikhafe. So, or should I say, because of Thomas Malikhafe, he actually died in 2012. Uh, that's when uh, actually came, took over. And that's close bond. That happened. It was uh, really phenomenal uh, as well. So, 
look, uh, it, it will be nice to, to see Copa there, but it will also be nice to see Umashabana who uh, did Dylan Shepard as well. So it, it, it's a win-win. It's mm-hmm. a win-win. Let, let, let us see who's going to be appointed. Probably the, yeah, the assistant coach or you be appointed. Yeah, you, you would. The assistant might come on Monday or it might come tomorrow. But Gavin Hunt's and job started in the, immediately. Okay. But what I know is that Doctor is already in. I don't know in what position, but Doctor is in. So Doctor did sign something. So, so let's, what let's, it is, we don't let's know. Touch base so on, on Popo Doctor. and Dylan. Let's touch base on Doctor. Then. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking at the, the the structures. Let's say at other top teams in in the world, we, we can speak of. They they have technical directors. People who are there to spot the talent, who are able to to blend into what's happening in the first team, to the development, to have that succession plan that's there. We saw a doctor had the same position at Baroka FC, mm-hmm. and Baroka performed well when he was doing that. Um, do you think he's going to be a doctor yeah. the same position at Kaza Chiefs? Because the recruitment process has been poor at Kaza Chiefs recently. Is that maybe potentially yeah, what we could see doctor at? Mm-hmm. We could. That's what we, we could uh, definitely. And um, mm-hmm. we'll be, if you are to give a doctor a te- technical di- director position, uh, then it will be great for him because it's not the first time w- uh, he's working in such a position. That is what he was released uh, for, from Kazi Chiefs for, to, to go to Barocca so that he could gain experience uh, as a technical director at Barocca so that when he comes back to Kazi Chiefs, he can be able to bring in some, uh, some sort of expertise as to what he learned from his time at Barocca as a technical director. And you are, you are actually right, Ivan, the, the, the recruitment process has been absolutely poor. I mean, you, you cannot be letting go the, the, the likes of uh, Yusuf Bunting, who could fit in uh, into the technique, or should I say the first team, very, very easily. Then you uh, put on, on loan uh, the likes of Given Tibedi and uh, Itomeleng Shopani, who are two speedy strikers, two speedy strikers who, who should be in the first team as well. And yeah, the, the, the recruitment process has really been really poor, but we need to go back to Kazam Daun's vision. His vision is clear that he wants to put an emphasis on uh, developing uh, young talent, promoting them to the first team. And he wants to do away with buying uh, expensive players because uh, it's it's really not, not going to uh, work for him. I mean, um, he has always uh, had the, the, this passion for young blood. That's why the, the youth development uh, has been a huge... Uh, it's a, it has been big on his heart for, for a very, very long time. So um, the, the mere fact that uh, the, the, some of the guys yeah. are not being promoted, it's really disappointing on, on our side. So I'm just uh, hoping that, that that can be fixed since uh, Gavin Hunt is one coach that really believes in youngsters. And that, that was probably one of the discussions in which uh, he had with the chairman uh, during the, the, the interviewing process because the chairman was able to identify in Gavin uh, his, his love for uh, young talent. So that that is one thing that they had in common. I mean, he already has the charisma, but the most important thing is that does he have the neck for uh, spotting young talent, especially from the dairy development side? Have you so? And, you know, another advantage, another advantage like we, with Dr. is because he has love for the team, so he knows who to spot and he knows who will come and work for Kaiser Chiefs. Uh, I'm going to stray a little bit and say this. Our problem again at Kaiser Chiefs is that we have been playing players who are there for the money and not for the brand. You know. So if we are going to bring back our, our, our young men from development, you're going to see a different Kaiser Chiefs. You're going to see exactly. people who are willing to fight for that Kaiser Chiefs. You know, going towards the end of the season, uh, though I was happy that our saw Mato is a striker, you can see someone who loves the brand and someone who doesn't. Mato did not move from the back because he knows how to strike. He moved from the back because he knows what he wants when he's on the pitch. So bringing back the likes of Alfroana, uh, Tibedi, uh, Sifa, Mangobo, those kids grew from, from, you know, they came from development. They're going to show the passion, the hunger. And that's what Dr. is going to go out there and spot, you know. Instead of, you know, just finding someone who's just going to spot nonsense in here just to come for money. When they're tired, they're tired. They want to be taken out of the team. 
yeah, because uh, at this moment, at this rate, uh, the, the culture is really, really good. So we need to bring the culture back. And uh, that, that is uh, what is uh, of the mm-hmm. utmost importance. We need to bring the, the culture back into the team because well, what we have seen in recent years was not the Kaiser Chiefs culture at all. And that is what has made uh, us uh, as a supporters really unhappy. So we need to bring back that culture back. So the, the, the structure needs to be there. Uh, in, in the development and once uh, the structure is there in the development it can be transferred or automatically to the first team we saw it's hand- another thing there's, there's our friend Danzi a Kaiser Chief supporter who his, in his opinion he feels that Kaiser Mutawu cannot go toe to toe with Petrus Mutsepe in terms of financially uh, the financial muscle so if we look at let's say in the recent in the recent transfer markets where Sundowns, if they want a specific player, they're willing to go all the way into getting that player. And when Kaza Chiefs, it hasn't been the case. Now he feels that if Kaza Chiefs were to do that in basically mm-hmm. doing by all means to get the player would cripple Kaza Chiefs finances. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah. Nah, that, that's a flawed statement. That, that statement is really, really flawed. Because if you think about it, uh, Kaiser Chiefs is the number one most available brand in South Africa and it's second in Africa. We're not talking personal pockets here. We're talking the club's coffers. So Chiefs is the one which has a strong financial, you know, backing than Sundown. So... That statement is flawed. Chiefs is capable of getting those players. They already want to come to Chiefs. What people don't understand is that uh, Kaza Chiefs do have money, loads of it. But what they don't understand mm-hmm. is the budget. What are they budgeting on? Because you need to take into consideration what where where is the money going. All right. So. The majority of the money will be going into marketing. That's why you've got all, all these, um, you know, wow um, uh, marketing displays there and everything. And then only like 20% of, uh, of the money is actually going into buying players. Now, uh, honestly speaking, uh, and I agree with, with Tabi, so that, that is really a flawed statement. I mean, uh, for, for 50 years, why would uh, why, why would a supporter well, they actually think that way, saying that no, who cares them down, cannot even go toe to toe with the likes of uh, Patrice Motepe and all that? Look, Kazam Daung's vision is really, really clear, right? In as much as uh, he wants to uh, uh, develop young uh, talent and all that, I'm not saying uh, he, he does not want. Uh, to buy players at all. No, he wants to limit the buying of players. So, which is why, look, Mamelodi Sundowns, if you have a look at the the, the way their budget uh, structure is, 90% of the time it's on players. 20% of the time it's on uh, other stuff as well. And that is why they're getting uh, the, the, the kind of players in which they want. Whereas at Kaiser Chiefs, we are looking more at developing players and building like superstars basically so that they can be able to make household names for, them, for themselves and uh, not uh, just uh, buy already established players we can buy already established players uh, once every two to three seasons all right that is okay but we don't want to do that every single season with, with that so you need to understand where the, the, the money is going she's not got a lot of money and uh, for, for, for someone to actually make such a statement saying that no, uh, uh, Kesam Dong cannot uh, go toe to toe with the Patrice Mutai mm-hmm. I, I was going to add up and say there's also, fin- I was going to add that there's also financial fair play. So, because yes. if financial fair play was not going to be added in, most of the small clubs would not be able to compete in the PSF because Pirate, Chiefs, and Sundowns will control what happens in the league. They will buy anyone they want to buy. They will do uh, whatever they want to do. They, they will basically make this league a farmer's league. You know, when it comes to buying players, when Chiefs want players, they can go and buy them. But sometimes we realize you don't have to buy everyone, you know, to to, 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 to accomplish your mission, you know. Mm-hmm. But to say, hey, Mutepe has this, it's like you're saying, okay, Mutepe buys from his personal pocket. No, mm-hmm. that's not how it happens. A club has its own budget to say, this is the money we're using for teams and things like that. 
uh, this is the money we use for players. This is the money, as Santa said. This is the money for marketing. This is the money for this. You can't go mm. to Mutsipe and say, Peter, go to Mutsipe and say, hey, Mutsipe, hey, 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 doesn't work like that. So, yeah, the guy needs to rethink his, uh, his statement and probably think before he tweets next time. Yeah. Okay. So now, my last statement, and, and this is, uh, obviously, you guys can comment from that and you can give your last views. So, I, I say that I am of the belief that top teams, not just in the PSL, but in all the leagues in the world, teams that are competing mm. to win titles or continental titles, you have to invest. Now, like we agree on the development phase of the club that is very important for the succession of the team. Yeah. But you do need those marquee signings for each team mm. to indicate the intent of saying, we are there. We see with Alex of Liverpool. We, yeah, we, we see with all these oh, Qatar. your main cities, your Chelsea's. There's intent in who they sign. Do you guys believe that in the world of football today, a team needs to commit into having some form of marquee signings as a form of intent to say, look, we mean business, we want to win. In order for a team to have intent to win any kind of competition, whether it be the league, whether it be a continental competition, whether it be domestic, you have to consist of quality players in your squad. That one, it's a no-brainer, right? But you also need to take into consideration how are you spending your money? You don't want your money to go into waste because you could find that you are you are actually spending loads on a player who is supposed to be quality, whereas uh, he's not quality at all. He ends up being dead with. That's money wasted. So it's all about, in as much as this guy is quality, is he going to be worth it at our club? Yes, we've seen it at Real Madrid. We've seen it at uh, Liverpool. Liverpool are coming up. We are starting to see it at Arsenal as well. Same thing. We are, you, you look at a, a club like Man United, who have spent over 200 million pounds last season on players. No, not like 10 players, a few players. And where have they ended up? Trophyless. So that, that, that is where I'm coming from as well. But if you have a look at the likes of Liverpool, um, who have actually been uh, investing in players per season, that, that, that is how they, they got to end up winning the league as well. So, yes, I am of the agreement that you have to spend the money on quality players, but proven quality. Not uh, quality based on hearsay, but proven quality. Tabi, so you might end. Yes. Let, let, let me add on what he said. So I think the best thing is to invest on players instead of spending on players. You know, those yeah. two are different things. When you spend yes. on players, you will be disappointed. That's Manchester uh, United, what they did. They spent on players. Liverpool invested on players. So you can see the difference between the two teams. So that's what Keza Chiefs also needs to do. Uh, we need to invest on players. And then when we invest on our players, we will see a difference. We will see Keza Chiefs. We will be see the Keza Chiefs that everybody loves. But if we spend on players, uh, they will disappoint us. Because everybody likes money. Everybody wants money. Players can perform for, 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 for a season and you think, let me spend money on that player. And they come and they become Maguire on your team. Hmm. Exactly. Because, look, uh, in, in, as far as uh, investing is concerned, wow, what is the advantage with us is that players that come in as free agents, uh, we, we, we can be able to see that uh, there, there are some there that are really of a good quality. That, that, that come in as a free agent. So those are the guys that, that we can be able to get, get on uh, lucrative deals from because the, the, the way Kaiser Chiefs operate, all right, and that, that this is just from my understanding, uh, maybe you can co- correct me if I'm wrong, is that the reason why uh, Kaiser Chiefs are always uh, embark on free agent players is so that they can be able to offer them lucr- lucrative deals. But now, my problem with, with, with that is that when you're offering them lucrative deals, you've got to ask the question, do they deserve that lucrative deal in the first place? Because you you are you, you have a look at players who are actually dead wood, but they, yet they were, op- they were offered lucrative deals. So that, that, that is why, why uh, Tabiso is actually mentioning that we need to invest in players, not spend on players. Because even when you're offering lucrative deals on players, 
that uh, don't even deserve it, that's more like spending. And uh, that is not like uh, investing. Mm-hmm. So before you, mm-hmm. you give them that offer, you need to tell them that, look, the reason why we are offering you the, uh, such and such an amount in this contract is because we see, uh, you, you know, uh, a value in which you're going to add into the team. But it, it is entirely up to you as to what you're going to do with that opportunity. But if you mess it up, we have the full right to, to terminate your contract because we've, we've given you an opportunity. You didn't uh, take advantage of it. Therefore, we will we, we have to let you go. So we need to embark on that mentality of investing. Kaza Chiefs should be about investing, not about spending. Okay, let's leave it there. Pause it there. Mm-hmm. Look, guys, you heard it from Tabiso, you heard it from Hunter. They told you what to expect from Given Hunt mm-hmm. and the team. Um, surprise signings or who players are going to come in and go. Now, what's going to be interesting about this season is that we know, and the guys agree, that there is going to be a difference of opinions when it comes to what is the mandate for Kevin Hunt at Kaiser Chiefs. We will see. But I can say this from a neutral point of view. It's going to prove to be very exciting when you have Kevin Hunt at Kaiser Chiefs. You've got uh, Zimbabwe who saw glimpses of at Pirates and we know what we're getting from Coach Peter Sana. So, from a neutral point of view, what we would like is for all these three giants to compete for the same titles. Now, that yeah. will be very exciting. Look, we're only a couple of weeks from, from the season starting. So, let's just hold that breath. We're not going to die. Let's just hold it a little bit. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Guys. Yeah, by the way. I was saying Sundowns should go and venture with people in EPL because they're going to come at us with stats and say, hey, we have won treble. Hey, I won 10 league titles. They should go and venture with EPL. We'll venture with Pirates and other teams now. So that's all I was saying. <laughs> and then Hunter? Well, I was actually disagreeing with uh, what Tavisa was saying. I say no, we, we need to go to to toe with, with Sundowns because uh, they, they've got 10 titles and uh, we, we've, we, we've got like what, four in the PSL era. So we want to make sure and uh, do all we can oh. to actually uh, cripple them. So in as much as our overall we are tied or overall the titles we are tied, but as far as the PSL era is concerned, uh, uh, some rounds are the most dominant, uh, uh, undisputedly, but we need to go toe to toe with them and yeah. really make sure that we can to dismantle. Because in as much as you are uh, requesting uh, Sundowns fans uh, no, not to banter with us, they're not going to listen. They're, they're going <laughs> to banter with us each and every single day. So we're going to have to be prepared. Yeah, they're going to yeah. throw shade at us. <laughs> I can, look, I can, I can say uh, this much. Banter between Kajichis and Sundowns has been going and it's still going even till today. Uh, I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. I lost you for a bit there. No, I was, I was saying the battle between Sunnons and Chief supporters has been going, it's still going, and it's still going to go. So, yeah, it's a never-ending story. Like, let, let, let's be honest. We, we just talk about Kaiser Chiefs and everyone, you know, by social media. Or you can hear the speech. You know, when I'm going to buy Tete, I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy it. <laughs> like I saw a post the other day, you know, I, I was, I was, we were busy tweeting about cheese and the new coach, and someone is like, it's, hey, send on sales, want a treble, hey, but they are busy making noise there. So I was like, we don't care, we don't okay, care, bro. we don't care about our team, man, we don't care about what our team, how our team performs, and what's happening with our team, you know. But hey, it is what it is. Come on, bring the benta on. I enjoy it to be honest. You know, as as someone as and Roy, I am okay with it. I am always willing to take the benta on. You know. All right. Well, that's the story. Yeah, that's that's what it is for us supporters who love the game. We we emotionally support our teams, but we need to be able to take the benta off. Guys, um. Thanks, thanks for, for, for joining. Look, we, we, we are going to be following to what's happening in this preseason. Uh, it's been some exciting things. I mean, we saw um, Chum, Chiefs stepping up and doing what they're doing. Sundowns has to also step up. We're waiting for Pirates to see what's happening and all the other teams. Look, it's all about setting the standard. It's about us bringing the game to a higher level. So we can't complain about this. But thanks again for joining, guys. Awesome.